Hey everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Jet Set Insider. My name is Robert Victor Anthony, which is the name of all three of my brothers. Murgatroyd. That another... no, doesn't need to be confusing, does it? <laughs> it's a story for another day. And no, my other two brothers don't share my name. It's just how my name worked out. For those of you who don't know who we are, we are an unbelievably awesome, incredible, ed entertaining couple who travels all around the world and takes in takes insanely cool trips. We're He's really been just, up since 3 a.m., which the, we'll talk about later. We're just a regular couple, but we share an insane passion for what we, what we like to call boutique travel. And we do it all on our website called jetsetlife.tv. And now we are taking that passion to the podcast worlds. In these podcasts, we share fun stories and travel tips and embarrassing videos and usually about Rob and we just kind of take you inside of all of the mistakes that Kim makes when she travels and we capture it on video so it was your hair not in the in the whole thing no I needed a little bit of a better angle but are you gonna burp for good. them today too no there's no burp okay there's good. no burp I, I look pretty good today I'm excited about that <laughs> we got a really really cool show but I, I, I have to say right at the uh, right at the start here I'm a little bit tired. You know why I'm tired? Because today is a very, very, very special day. For those people that are a little bit on the techie side or a little bit on the Apple obsessed side. Or just live on earth. <clears throat> when this podcast is recorded, the iPad 3, I'm going to call, they like to call it now just the iPad was released. So I couldn't sleep. I got up at 3 in the morning. <clears throat> My beautiful incredible wife actually me. made meals for me to take while I sat in line. But when did I make the meals? 3 a.m. So I got up too she in made, honor of the iPad. She made the meals to make sure that, uh, I think she's got a hidden agenda. She wants to make sure that I keep my abs. And Absolutely. I don't, I don't have those triple chins like I have in those, uh, in those uh, <laughs> Absolutely. videos. Um, do you want to talk about our sponsor real quick? Yeah. So today's podcast is brought to you by audible.com. You can get a free, yes, absolutely free audiobook download at audibletrial.com forward slash Jet Set Life. They have over what, like 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, your Android, Kindle, and can you put them on your iPad 3? No, but I want to know who has You can't? <clears throat> Uh, can you, you can't put, put an audible book on your iPad? Of course you can. Okay, so why'd you say no? Well, you can, but remember, it's audible. So yeah. you have to walk around with like a boom box. To Not listen. really, or you just plug it in to your iPad and listen your, to it while you work. I guess so there right. you go. So head over to audibletrial.com forward slash Jet Set Life and download your free book. And by the way, <clears> you can't get this offer anywhere else. So just do it here. But what if they what if they try and just go to Audible and just say, screw those Jet Set people. They got enough money. They travel all around the world. <laughs> screw them. I'm not giving uh, them any more money. Will they get the deal? Will they no. get a free book? No. No. You won't get a free book. You got to go to audibletrial.com forward yeah. slash Jet Set Life. Kim, right. tell them about our show. All right. So in this week's show, we are going to go south. First to South America. <laughs> that sounded really Weird. Why? This Where's week, your mind? This week we're going south? You have spinach in your teeth. I do? Yeah, right there. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. No, you might want to go. Go get that. Um, I go fix that. I recommend the audio version. version right <laughs> okay, I got it. Okay, good. So, yes, this week we are going south, whether you like it or not. And our first stop is in South America for some sun, fun, and uh, some really cool things that we did. And then we're heading over to our current hometown of Atlanta. And uh, we're going to show you a little day-to-day, uh, -day, non-travel, really gross behind-the-scenes video. By so, the way, we don't like w when you say hot Atlanta. I'm just going to tell you yeah, right now. We, we, don't, we don't like it. We don't like it. It's like the people in San Francisco don't want to hear Frisco. They go like, oh, you obviously don't know San yeah. Fran. Because yeah. that's what we call it. We don't yeah. call it Frisco. Yeah. I think that's a sandwich that McDonald's makes. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, so like it's it. not hot, Lana. I mean, it is hot, Although but it's not. Although today, it is it's, so and hot. And it's March. It's, it's crazy. Like 90. All right, so this is going to be a long show, I can tell already, because you're very chatty. No, I feel good. I got my new iPad, and I got some other good stuff. What are you doing? A yoga? Like, what is oh, this? <laughs> stretch? Like, stretch. it's weird. 
All right. So in our first segment, uh, we called this one once in a lifetime. And I went through and found some really cool things that we've done. And um, we just want to share our once in a lifetime experiences in South America with you. In our second segment, we call Tango Tragedy. We see, or you see, how we completely pissed off Tim Ferriss's tango teacher in Buenos Aires. In our BA bloopers, we have a little bit of car trouble. (laughs) In our TMI, you guys are coming inside, and yes, I mean inside, Rob's first Brazilian wax. Deep. Deep. Deep inside. Deep. Yes, you don't want to miss that. Oh, and by the way, it is a video. So there you go. And in our next segment, we are going to find some new things Rob's obsessed about. And in our last, another Jet Set Book Club little share, we are going to share a nice little fun read for the road. It's a great read. Yeah. I'll tell you all about it. But let's let's talk about um, our first one, which is Once in a Lifetime. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so you want to set this one up or you want me to do it? Um, I'll do it. Okay. I'll do it. So in... South America, where soccer is called football, it is a huge sport. Now, spelled, in one of our... Spelled F-U-T. Okay. I didn't know that. That's odd. Football. Okay. Well, there you go. In our previous segments, we've shared with you the story of how we had to get into the La Boca Junior Soccer Stadium, but we didn't really share with you what the experience once you're inside is really about. So this is one of our once in a lifetime experiences. Actually, and this one, you know who makes an appearance in this one? D- Whitey? This is a Whitey. This is a Whitey. This is a Whitey. He's like, he's like, he's like. It's like, where's Waldo? Like but it's where's, where's Whitey. It's like, where's, yeah, where's Waldo? Where's like Whitey? Got there he is. I got him. There he Circle is. Circle him. <laughs> Circle him. We got him. Okay. So uh, this one, these are not funny videos. These are just really fun experiences that you guys need to do once in your life. So let me let me say this before we go to this clip. Okay. There's no possible way other than to show you what this experience is like, but you can imagine being inside a stadium that's probably, I don't know, 50 years old. It's not new for sure. With You went with 50? I just, it felt you like You just a, threw a number out? Yeah, stadiums on average, just wiki it, are 50 years old. I mean, it's, everybody, everybody know. Everybody know. Everybody Thinking know. of Atlanta, everybody know. A- everybody know. If you watch The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Phaedra, her favorite line is, everybody know, and then she comes up with something stupid. Everybody like, know that if a belly baby button is pushed out, you just take a quarter, you put it on, you wrap it up with a rubber band, the baby, and the, the umbilical cord will fix itself. Everybody know that. Yeah, so there you go. That was good. That, was <clears throat> that good. wasn't bad. Thank so, you. So, back to BA. Um, imagine being inside of the stadium where everybody is screaming for an hour and a half before the match starts. I think that's what they call soccer things. Is it called a match? <laughs> Was it a game? Game, game whatever. match, yeah. whatever. I did. Okay. That. I had this vision of like kung fu. Aww. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the stadium is literally bouncing Shaking. up and down. But I want you to. Yeah. I want you to notice two things. I want you to notice how many people are in the stands. I want you to notice how loud and animated they are. I want you to notice um, how they're all singing songs. I think in this clip at the same time. Then I want you to notice the cheerleaders are hot chicks dressed in scantily clad, we're going to call it, costumes, and they're not afraid to show their... What is it, what's it called? Costumes. 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 They're not as... Well, let's go to the clip. <laughs> are pretty hot cheerleaders are hot they're hot you see everybody going nuts everybody's going nuts it was one of the most exciting thrilling things that we ever did and by the way i think we're dedicating this clip to uh malarkey right sean malarkey yeah sean malarkey. because he actually we were talking about it we were in dc last weekend or two weekends ago give, give, and, a, um, give a plug out to uh, the seminar it was amazing seminar. oh yeah we went to a seminar called uh, underground it's mm-hmm. for internet business people and uh, we met some really cool peeps 
love the seminar. Great time, great connections. But um, we got to share these give little a, videos. Give a shout out to your other friends too. Who did we meet? We made new friends. Um, Liz D'Alto, I think is how you say her yep. last name. Right? Yeah. She's got a... Um, tighter in 10 days. Tighter in 10 days. Yep. We'll give her a little bit of plug. Of course, the, uh, the ever famous David Garland of the Rise to the Top fame. Super amazing. Super cool guy. Amazing guy. And the same in person as he is on the TV. A a absolutely true. Yeah. Um, they're also Shorter, though. <laughs> Lewis Howes um, gave an amazing mm -hmm. talk about uh, how he conquered LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah, if you want to get hooked up on LinkedIn, just Google Lewis, Lewis Howes and you'll find exactly how to do that. And I don't exactly know what Sean Malarkey does. Do you? Do you? <laughs> I think he works with Lewis. He's just got the coolest name in the world. I don't know. Can't you just say Next that like Next to Murgatroyd, it's Malarkey. Sean Malarkey. <laughs> yeah. Don't give me none of that oh, Malarkey. You know what? It's what? for um, the Irish Day. What's the Irish Day? Uh, St. Patrick's Same, Day. Thank you. St. Patrick's Day. So Which this is, one... by the way, today or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Sometime this weekend. I think it's tomorrow. Okay. I think it's tomorrow. Well, there you go. So that BA is that clip. The day, is that the day where everybody shows their boobs? I don't know, honey. No, that's Mardi Gras. No, they do do that in, in Savannah. Maybe we should head to Savannah this weekend. Show your go. boobs. Woo! All right. So, <clears throat> speaking of show your boobs... Not really, just kidding. Did, we are. Are you segueing into Christ with um, the boobs? <laughs> oh my yeah. God. I was actually segueing into Listen, Rio. Nobody, but... can, nobody can sell your cookbook because of the name that you chose. Mm. Now, people, you, you're you going to lose sponsors. You're going to lose. There's all kinds of things that are going to happen. Why do you lead this life? I'm going to send you to a convent. Okay, well, <laughs> they wouldn't like me there. They'd kick me out. Anywho, uh, that was my segue into Rio, which. Really didn't make any sense because they're more about the booty than they are the boobs. When but, my baby smiles at me, I go to I told Rio. you this was going to be a long show today. My oh me oh. Okay. I do the Okay, tango. 3 a.m. Okay, go ahead. So this is another experience that we had a few years ago. And we're actually going back this year for New Year's Eve. And with, I'm with, none with Whitey. Other, with none other than Whitey. <laughs> Whitey. And we're trying to get uh, uh, David uh, Seitman Garland on, to come on board on. as well. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but we're heading back to Rio for New Year's. It's one of the most, that experience alone is amazing. But this one thing we did in Rio, this helicopter ride. Now, we've done helicopter rides in the past. And they're great. You know, you get to see it's really pretty and everything. But when you helicopter around... Christ the Redeemer, that giant tall statue on the tallest mountain in Rio and all of that. There is, religious or not, there is something just magical about that experience. Is it not? Um, it's more than magical. It, it, I don't know how to put it into words, but let me, let, let me say this. You get to the top of the mountain, you, you take like a cab or whatever up and you keep circling. How do you get to the top of the mountain when you do the thing? What are you talking about? We're talking about helicoptering. There is no top of the mountain. Oh, I was so, I, okay. That's right. I thought I hand glided around Christ the Redeemer. No, I didn't hand glide around that one. No. This one I helicoptered <laughs> around. Oh, that one? Yeah. Okay, sorry. I got my clip screwed up. But I'm going to tell that story in 60 seconds. Um, yeah, the helicopter ride, if you've been in a helicopter before, it's just like being in a helicopter, except the difference is you get to helicopter around. You know, Christ the Redeemer, just so you know, it looks like this. For all those people. It's the one... Just like that. <laughs> that's like this. Yeah, he looks just like that. <laughs> okay? Exactly like and that. And the name of the mountain, by the way, let's see how good you are. What's the name of the mountain that it's on? I don't know. Corcovado. There you go. Good job. Okay? So they sometimes you'll hear it called Corcovado. Sometimes you'll hear Christ the Redeemer. But it's that thing that you see. Well, Corcovado is the mountain. Christ the Redeemer is the statue. Adults talking over here. So it's very, very important <laughs> that... You mean old you people? Seniors? Let's go to the clip. Isn't that beautiful? 
There's and like, by, by the way, by, did you like my by editing? The way, the way you did the music, the, audio. the mm-hmm. audio, I did good. I felt like I wanted to go, and yeah. I was there. And you are. I was. And there. we're going back, and we're doing it all again because it was so great the first time. Here's something else we're gonna do again. Yeah. If you'll do it, yeah. and we're gonna we're gonna get Whitey to do this one, and we're so gonna video this, hang gliding in Rio, never hang glided before, never jumped off at any mountains. Never did anything along that line, right? Prior to this. This is the one I fucked up, right? Yeah. Okay, so let me set this one up because now I, I, it's in me. I got to get this out. Yeah. First of all, is it hand? Hang. You're hanging. What Then what's hand gliding? I, I don't know. But we were hanging. For those of you who know the difference between hand gliding and hang gliding, send us an email to heyjetset at gmail.com. Sorry about the dog. Okay. <laughs> is there any reason... Oh, because it's the, no, ne- it's it's the next door dog. Yeah. What, you, they start one starts, the other one goes, and then it's I bark loud, and my bark is louder. Who's, than your whose bark. bark is bigger? Yeah, whose bark is bigger? That's, it's, you don't know anything about that, do you? No, I don't. Okay, so if you've never gone hand hang, hang, d- hang gliding, gliding, here's what you do in Rio: you take a cab and you go up the top of this mountain. When you get to the top of the mountain, you're covered, or at least we were at the time we went you're covered in clouds, okay? So you don't really have a sense for how high you are because you're so high, you're in the clouds, but you can't see anything, right? So they make you sit there and wait to hang glide until it clears because you can't obviously hang glide in clouds. So well, you can, they just need a break in the clouds so that you can see where you're going for like a second. So, I said, okay, so what kind of training do I need? Because I've never done this at all. And we have cameras there and we're trying to figure it out. And the guy says, you ready for your training? I said, yeah. (laughs) He goes, when I say run, I want you to run with me. And don't stop. And don't stop. And I said, that's the training? He goes, that's the training. I say go, you run. As fast as you can. Are you ready? Let's test. And so he tests you to make sure you can run. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Okay. So then you're sitting up there. And by the way, this is tandem. You're going with somebody that actually yeah. knows what they're doing. Yeah. So you're sitting up there and you're waiting and you're waiting and waiting. And they're like, still nothing yet. And it was how, how long was it we were up there? Well, we were up there quite a while because it was pretty cloudy that day. And, um, few, you know. It was a few hours. Yeah. And the longer you're up there, like every once in a while, there's a line of people that are waiting to go. So every once in a while, some there's a break and someone goes. But they're just running into the clouds, so you can't really see anything. You don't really know exactly what's going on, which I have to tell you, for me, for my first time, I'm so glad there was clouds because if there, if it was a perfectly clear day, I don't know that it could have ran off the side of a mountain. Yeah, because You're basically, you, don't have, you don't have any sense yeah, for how high you like, are. It's a mountain, and there's a, let's call it a deck, mm-hmm. with a 45% downward angle, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like this. You start here, and you literally run off, and you fly. So... But there's the mountain, so you're going straight down. With the clouds, it's kind of a little bit of a protection from what you see. And once you're up, you're not scared because there's no falling feeling or anything like that. But let's go to the clip because so, it kind of well, shows let just, everything. Let me just say, so they, they talk to the people that are down. What's below you is the beach because obviously Rio is... Oh yeah, that's the coolest part is hang gliding onto, yeah. the, onto the beach. So they're on the walkie-talkies. Is it clear? Is it clear? Is it clear? And then finally he goes, okay, go, 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 go. And then you got to like... You're, you're off. You're, you're bullshitting in the corner with somebody, but you got to go. So you strap it in. You don't have any time for fear. He looks at you. He gives you that eye contact. and goes, when I say run, run. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's, go, 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 go. And... I think I went first. No, I, you went first. I went first because okay. we mic'd we me. Wanted to, we wanted to do the opening to our Rio video with Welcome to Rio. So she's mic'd. You'll see this clip. She's mic'd and I'm behind her on another one of the airplanes or whatever the hell they're called, the hang glides, yeah. behind her. So she's like, Welcome to Rio! And you hear this. And then you... then you. Well, let him, let okay, him just let, watch the video. Why do you have to tell everything? I like to talk. Go ahead. So what I've learned so far about hang gliding is that it's all about the run. I have about six steps off this really short platform before I'm jumping off the side of a mountain. I kind of feel like I want to have diarrhea and vomit all at the same time. Short. Oh, I'm short. (laughs) It's okay. Now stay with me and look ahead. Okay. Tell me when we're going to go. Stick here with me, Popo. Segura here for me. 
Oh. You'll tell me when? When I say go. Okay. Come down from Luca. Okay. All right. Go, 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 go. Welcome to Rio! Oh my god, this is awesome. Did you hear the little... How about that? Oh, this is cool. How Did you that? hear that? Isn't that? It was the coolest experience in the world. And by the way, I got scolded 12 times from this guy because I was trying to do the opening. And he's going, listen, I know you want to do this fancy opening, but you're jumping off a mountain right now. So I need you to focus and run. And all But I, it was pretty cool. All I can tell you is that the moment you get off air. of the let, yeah, the moment you get air, you're sucked up. Like a draft gets you, you're yeah. sucked up. And in that moment, it's like... Um, you're a bird. You're it's free like, you're, like it's a bird. Like it's like you're a bird. It's, like, yeah. it's truly like you're flying. It's really a And you don't want it to stop. Nope. It's, it's not scary. It's just incredible. So, so two things for your bucket list, right? One three. is... Well, do you know how so, to count? Well, so far... Do we do three? Oh, yeah, yeah, three. One is the... You're going to uh, have to excuse him. <laughs> I'm very tired. I got up at 3 a.m. Go to the uh, La Boca Juniors uh, game. Two is go to Christ the Redeemer with a helicopter. And three is go hang gliding in Rio. And we're going to be sharing more of these things that we do around the world with <clears> you <throat> um, as the weeks go on. Let's tell them about how you did not know how to do the tango. Well, we were in uh, Buenos Aires. Can you stay in the video today? Yeah. Come I'm move it over a little. Thank you. Okay. Um, we were in Buenos Aires. <laughs> I'm just. Long I'm... video today. I told you. Um, we were, one more time, in Buenos Aires, and we went to La Veruda, which is a real rural tango center, I'm one, is what I'm going to call it. You go at like midnight. And you have a lesson and it costs two bucks, right? The the equivalent of like two or three dollars per person. And you go in and we walk in and we think that we're going to like, you know, a place, something nice. It's really like a community center. They serve um, really bad cocktails through a wall. Remember that? And the entire thing is in Spanish. So you have Magoo here, Magoo 1 and Magoo 2, who've never danced before and he has two left feet. And we're about to do the tango, learn the tango, very difficult dance in Spanish. By the way, the way that I found this place, for those of you that are Tim Ferriss 4-Hour Workweek fans, when I read the book, he talks about how he moved to yeah. Buenos Aires. And, you know, he later went on to, of course, like everything else, become a Guinness Book World Record holder in the most spins in 60 seconds. Which, by the way, who the fuck is cares about spinning somebody the most amount of times in 60 seconds? He does. But he does. So he did. Type um, A. Type A. So um, we sought out his tango instructor um, who taught him how to do that and the studio that he trained. So that's how we wound up there. Yeah. Um, this place is just... This it's, it's amazing. It's so an amazing place. We'll talk about it a little more in, in a second, but I want to get to our dancing. Yeah. Okay. Tell them how Num you, you didn't know how to do it. <laughs> well, number one, let me show you what the tango is supposed to look like. <laughs> So you see how romantic and fluid that's what in I was, the whole that's thing, what I was right? trying to show. I was trying you to were show, trying to show I was me trying that. to show yeah. you like I I would have done it if I wasn't filming that. I if if you recall, I actually filmed that clip. Yeah. So I wasn't able to demonstrate to perform it. it correctly. Right, but I but I would have. Yeah, yeah but I you would have. have. Yeah. You're because you're capable, right? All right. More than well, let me show you how capable he was. So the big thing in the tango, apparently is that the man leads right. because he's supposed to be the man. Of course. Right? Yeah, masculine. Masculine. Yeah. What? Did you freeze? Are you <laughs> You look like you were on Skype. You were like on Skype. I don't even know what to say. This one, I'm trying to say it without hurting your feelings. He sucks at the tango. <gasps> okay. Did that work? Oh. So, we went and every time we were supposed to go one direction, he would go the opposite. We'd go the other direction. He'd go the opposite. So we were getting yelled at by this teacher. So in the next clip, here's us dancing the tango, doing the lesson. By the way, Whitey is filming. Mm -hmm. Just want to throw that out little there. Little shout out. Little to, shout out to Whitey. To where's He's Waldo. filming it. And you'll notice I do this with my head. 
for those of you, it's on, not a tick. For those I'm of telling you the, him where the, to go on the audio feed. She's she's she's. For those of you Jer- on the audio feed, Jer- get on the damn video feed because <laughs> she's you're jerking not her head to the left, left giving right. me directions. Yeah, you're never going to see it. Go and go left, go right with yeah. your head. So this is how I'm helping him because he didn't know where to go. I got screamed at for that <laughs> one because the man is supposed to lead and I was technically leading. But if I didn't lead something, we would have ended up in no man's land. So there you go. Let's let's watch us do the tango. This is how it should not be done. <laughs> See why we need lessons? Yeah. I guess after looking at that clip, I think I might need a little work. You need a little work. I thought right? I was better than I was, but. No. But no. How about. I. So you were trying. I looked like I was doing the. Like. <laughs> by, the by the way, all kidding aside, had, had you not done that head tilt, tell me which direction to go, you'd have two broken ankles. Yeah. I, well, I know. That's what the problem was. So then show them, show them what the teacher did to you. Well, then we go and we're doing the opening to Buenos Aires, right? So we get the, the teacher at La Veruda, um, and he's this, you know, amazing tango dancer and he's going to, you know, oh, dance with me for the opening. Mm. Well, I'm used to dancing with this guy. Mm-hmm. So like, I'm, you know, just standing there and he grabs me, scoops me up and I'm a little timid. And so, listen in this clip to what he says. Close your eyes and follow me. Take me. Did you hear it? Take me. Take me. First of all. Hold on, hold on. Do it. Take me. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) So, I'm going... That's really sexy, first of all. I was like, are you two going to get a room? Should I leave? Like... But it's completely benign, and it was innocent, and it was just how he speaks. Well, it, it, I mean, it is... It's a sexy dance. Though. It is part of... If you remember, we went to the hotel La Faina to see the show. There was like yeah. a guy that was like 80 yeah. doing the tango. I mean, with a woman who was not young. Well, actually, no, no she, she was, was very young. She was young, yeah. but it didn't matter that he was so elderly because of how... Of his masculine, mm-hmm. his his ownership of uh, her. Like, yeah, I, like, <laughs> for, forgive that. Like, I don't mean to be sexist, but like he owned her. You know, pretty crazy. It was so, beautiful. So I would I would actually add that to your bucket list. That was an amazing experience. Yes. Tell me about the problems that you had um, trying to get into. Why is the... everything my problem? Well, because I, I that's how I remember. Are we moving on to your BA bloopers? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, your BA bloopers mm. being the keyword there. All right, so let's just set this why up. Why do you guys like my bloopers? Why Why does everybody like want to see? Because you're funny. It's, it's embarrassing. Yeah, well, you're funny. Okay. Point a camera, that's all I have to do. Just add water. Just add water. A little tequila doesn't hurt you. <laughs> all right, so Rob is doing an intro for our BA video here on taking a private car tour, which I'm gonna give a little plug to Fiorella Levine over at TMT Travel. She completely hooked us up in Buenos Aires and is the absolute chick to deal with on anything BA. She's amazing. So anything Argentina, really. Um, we, got but, any, we got any money for that? <sighs> so, so. I'm just saying, these, the price of these trips are very expensive. <laughs> we should get a nickel every time we say somebody's name. I, okay. By the way, if you want us to mention your name, send a dollar and a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here is Rob's blooper for trying to explain a car tour in BA. A great way to see the city is by private tour. Four hours? <laughs> okay, you think it's easy? Sometimes things just don't go right. You, you think it's easy, okay? Fun so, stuff. Sometimes the door is friggin' locked. Okay? Yeah, it's not at so the easy. wrong time. But, but speaking of cars in BA, I, I can't quite explain what this is except to just say it. I started noticing a pattern when I was in the back of a taxi going through the city day after day. And that is that there are 80s, not just 80s music, 80s love songs. It's like Delilah, 19, yeah. circa 1983. And it was like, 
and and they're Spanish, and they're and the songs aren't Spanish. The taxi driver's Spanish, but he's singing the songs, and he doesn't really know the words. Day to them. and night, day and night. Like every time you get in it, so. Finally, after like the four billionth time, we decided to video and a couple it. cocktails. A couple cocktails. So here's here's what the back of a cab looks like in Buenos Aires. Something oddly strange about taxis in Buenos Aires. I don't know why. I don't know what the origin, what the derivation. I have no idea. But you get into one, and they play '80s sappy love songs. <laughs> and by the way, I didn't know the words to the song either. But but you know the song, and I, is it like? But it was every. Is it air taxi. supply? Is it? It was every Richard taxi. Marks. God knows. Ario Speedwagon. God I don't knows. know. But let me tell you something else. One more little tip on taxis. Motherfucker, I said it. Tell them, honey, because I'm going to screw the story up. This made me so mad. What did they say in the hotel? What did they say in the hotel? Don't take a gypsy cab. Don't take a gypsy but cab. How do you know the gypsy cab? I have no idea. They, they have a system. They have it's a like, special oh, cab. look, it has a hook at the top. No, and- it, 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 they, have a, they have a special thing at the top, and they say, only take these cabs. You have to only take these cabs, only take these cabs, only take these cabs. Well, we went to a nightclub. We're out all night, we're hanging out, everything's cool. We come back really late. And the thing about BA is sometimes you can't find a taxi. So, especially when everybody's grabbing them. And it's late, It's we're in a weird spot. And we took whatever taxi we could get because I think we were standing for a taxi for like 40 minutes or something. And we jumped into a, into a cab, had them bring us to the hotel. We pay the man. And then within seconds, he goes... Stop, you can't get out. You, this is fake money, counterfeit, counterfeit, counterfeit. And he's telling us that our money is counterfeit. Now, we don't know what to do. I'm like, oh my God, we have counterfeit money. I can- and how do you, like, how do you prove it? Like, the money- like all of their money looks counterfeit. Right. It's, it's, it looks like <laughs> it look, a rainbow. It looks like Monopoly money. Yeah, it all looks like Monopoly money to me. So, and we're, it's dark and we're in a taxi. And so we had our hotel, um, Rob got out and they saw that we were having an altercation so they came out but we had both gotten out of the taxi and the guy had said to me this is fake money this is fake money I need real money so I gave him being stupid more money that was real money and when the people came out to uh, help us with the situation, the guy just drove off. So basically, we paid like twice as much for a taxi. Well, I think there's one more step that you left out which is that he produced well, he switched money. the bill. He switched the bill. Well, it's a scam. It's a scam. So yeah. he's got like... Z- Xerox. It's, it's literally like you took a dollar bill, went to a copy machine, Xeroxed it and cut it out. Yeah. So you hand the guy the money and he goes, oh, it's fake. Here. Switches it, hands it back to you. And, and you're, you're looking like, at it. Oh my you're God. Like, I didn't give you that. Yeah. I, I totally would have known that. Yeah. Then we get back into the hotel and the hotel lady said, it is the oldest scam in the book. They do it all the time, mm-hmm. and gypsy cabs do it. You gotta go. You so, gotta be careful. So that's our little buyer beware tip mm-hmm. in, uh, we in got Buenos a, Aires. We got a little screwed with the taxi and BA. <clears throat> yeah, that's I, honestly that is like the first time that we were ever like that, scammed. That we were like in all the crazy yeah. places we've been. It was the first time like I ever felt like I got like I took it up the you know what. So you want to talk about your obsessions? Well, no. Speaking about oh, speaking about, about taking it up, the you know what? <laughs> Good segue. All right. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna just make this as simple as I can. Okay. As many of you know, I'm getting old, right? I'm in. I'm. Going, Are we about to talk about your Brazilian wax? I'm going past 45. I don't know why this happens as you get older. What is the reason that nose hairs and ear hairs grow? like Bermuda grass coming out of your nose and you can't stop it, okay? So it used to be when I was 30, you'd get one of those nose trimmers, you trimmed it, you were good until the spring, you know what I mean? Like, (laughs) you were fine, okay? You did spring cleaning and you were fine until the next year. Now, it's like you do it on Monday and Thursday, you got spaghetti coming out and like... And you've seen those old men that just have it coming out like it's... I look like Nixon. I mean, I don't know what the hell's going, like what is happening? 
So, you know, my wife was going for a little touch up with the uh, waxing. The wax. I said touch up on the face. I, I don't know why. I, I think because I felt uncomfortable talking about another part of you. <laughs> but she was going for a little whatever they do at Brazil. You do the math, what the Brazilians do. But she was going there and Thanks, she said, honey. she said, uh, you know, they do noses. And I'm like, noses? And she's like, yeah, they do noses. I was like, okay. W- all right, well, I'm having a lot of trouble like constantly clipping it. I guess if they pull it at the root, it's got to go longer. Well, you don't really realize (laughs) unless you regularly get Brazilians what's involved with a waxing. A a Brazilian nose wax. A Brazilian nose wax. So I'm just going to show you. There you go. Rob, what are you doing? I'm doing, I'm getting Brazilian. Open your eyes. Getting a, it's called a nose. It's called a nose. Brazilian. Brazilian. It's what it is. This is what they do in Brazil. This you is going to go on our podcast next week. Well, they say when in Rome, you know, so what in Brazil, you got a nose Brazilian. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, but it might not be. Okay, is it cut? Oh, this is... Here. It's not ready yet. Okay. Actually, it is. You didn't scream. Uh, That's good. Is that it? It's over? (laughs) Wow, I can put my nose thong on now. Better than I thought you were. I thought you were going to scream like a little bitch. It is fifth. No, not 15. That's an exaggeration. It's three seconds of sheer pain. Now, what did you think when she was shoving the wax up your nose? Well, here's the thing. It's like pain pleasure because when you're lying there, you got this hot chick, you know, you got women who are getting their whole business removed. Okay, right? You got the whole thing going. You got warm wax she's putting in your nose. Everything's good. I mean, you're feeling good, right? I mean, it's a Meanwhile, little, I'm, it's sitting, a little I'm in weird. the corner snickering. It's because... a little weird. And I didn't really notice <laughs> that she has straws in my nose. She stuck the walrus things up your nose. I don't nose. know what that is. And then all it of a sudden. It was to help pull it out. This not, well, I don't, but there's a bamboo. What is it? A skewer? It's just a stick. A stick. She goes outside the tree and breaks it's it. It's a stick, yeah. She shoves sticks up your nose. And then whap. Now, let me say this. With all of the, the terror that was involved in that, I have not seen the inkling of a hair, and that was how many weeks ago? What, a while ago. Like Nothing. Three weeks, yeah. So, men, it, get your Brazilian nose on, okay? <laughs> I'm telling you. And how much did it cost? Oh, 10 bucks. 10 bucks, yeah. okay? So, there you go. No more of the Roto Rooter or scissors, okay? And if you're not that age yet and you're going, what the hell is he talking about? You'll be, you'll get there. All right, so I got three things that uh, that I'm obsessed with. We're going a little bit long, so I'm going to do them quick. Number one is the iPad 3, which I got this morning. Why am I obsessed with it? Because it's an iPad. Because it's an Apple product, and I'm obsessed with He's it. He's the crazy guy that gets up at three to stand in line. What number were you in line? Eight. Eight. Okay, there you go. Okay, so the iPad 3 basically has got this new thing called Retina Display. So anybody who has an iPhone that is uh, a four or newer knows that when you had the three and they moved to the four that it literally looked like you were putting glasses on the clarity it's um it's eight it's an hd quality screen 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 <laughs> so you got to get that the next thing is an app for my iphone called turntable i think it might be one word so if you go into the app store uh, i think it's called turntable but let me tell you about this thing because it's the coolest thing ever okay quickly all right, so imagine... I'm going to put a timer up. You, okay. have, you have 60 seconds. Okay. Go. You go into a room. You pick the genre of music you want. There's a big stage with avatars. You can, If there's spots available, you can become a DJ. You, When you say, I want to be a DJ, you sit in the seat. There's other people who are in the room. Your avatar room. sits in the seat. This, your avatar, yeah, not you. But your avatar sits in the seat, Okay. Then you have people in the room that are listening. So you wait for DJ one to play his song, DJ two to play his song, and then you go, let's say you're DJ three. When you play the song, there's a bunch of people that are sitting in the room with their avatars and they're not moving. 15 seconds. Once you play the song and they start liking it, they give you a point, a credit, and then they start dancing. 
okay? And then you make friends. And I got six points this morning. And I did that in 60 seconds. So anyway, check it out. Uh, how, last can, one, how can they find you on Turntable? Well, right now it's my name. but um, Can I they need, find you? Can they search that? Yeah, you can search Rob Murgatroyd. You find me. Search it. See what he's playing because now he's a DJ. He thinks he's Tiesto. By the way, I need a name like Tiesto. So if anybody has a name Like a DJ for me. Name. Yeah, all the DJs have their own names. I'm uh, thinking Old Spice. No, I don't like that. I don't like that. I, I would like something Italian, and I would like something with one or two sim, uh, syllables, um, and I want it to be something that means something that's not used everywhere. I got it. What? DJ Sfacim. Okay. That's a long <laughs> story. Sfacim is not bad, though. For, for those who speak Brooklyn Italian, you'll know what Sfacim is. Um, the last thing I am obsessed with is this thing right over here. Um, I'm going to spell it for you. It's S-C-O-S-C-H-E. I think it's German. Sashashi. I have no idea. Basically, what it is, is you plug your iPhone. There's a little wire that goes from your iPhone into this thing. And it will allow you... By the way, it weighs... Like, this is perfect for travel. It weighs like an ounce. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're taking a cruise uh, next week or the 10 days, two weeks, something like that. And I'm going to take it on the cruise and check it out. But you get two speakers. It's $12. It's speakers okay? for your iPhone. It's speakers for your iPhone. It's 12 bucks. You could stick it in the bag. It's small enough it actually has good audio to carry. Too. And the audio is really, really not bad. Um, Last segment. Tell Let's them about, make it good. Tell them about the book. Well, the Jet Set Book Club. This is our Jet Set Book Club selection. Last time it was When I Stop Talking, You'll Know I'm Dead. I hope you all went to audibletrial.com forward slash Jet Set Life and downloaded that. If you didn't, you still can. Or you can download this week's selection, which is... All right, so there's this book. You know Russell Simmons. He's... Uh, he's from my hometown, Queens. I don't know why I said it like that because they don't. They don't. Does he live in Atlanta now? If it's Queens, it would sound like this. No, he doesn't. It's from my fucking hometown. It's where I grew up. I grew up in Queens. That was better. That was okay. Good. Um, he's the guy that founded Def Jam, Fat Farm. He's married to was married to was married to Kamora Simmons. He's a big Buddhist guy, a big vegetarian. His brother is uh, uh, Run. Run from Run's house, who was in Run, Run DMC. DMC. His wife okay. owns the. F you, you get you the. You got idea. it. All right. They so know who he is. Okay. He wrote a book called "Do You," and in short, he talks about how people don't really get in touch with who they are. And he had this expression that he said all the time, over and over again: "Just do you, man. Whatever, whatever you is, do you." And I'm okay with... So if you get nose Brazilians, do you? Do you, okay? Whatever it is. It's a fantastic book to get in touch with your authenticity. We wanted to keep this podcast at 40 minutes. It is now 39 minutes and 10 seconds. And it's longer than that with the video. We, we oh, we're at 30 minutes. Okay. We're chatty today. All right, so maybe we'll, we'll chop up some... No, uh, some we're good. Because it's all it, good? It is what it is. All right, listen. Who do I want to beat? I want to be, I sound like a cheerleader. Who do I want to beat? I want to beat Rick Steves. I love Rick Steves. I love Rick Steves, but I want to beat Rick Steves, which means that we want to be the number one podcast. The only way we can do that is by getting your comments. Comment five star ratings. And you guys we are doing a great job because we really are getting a lot. And we're. Every week we get new ones. And I really, really, really appreciate it. So if you can go to iTunes, give us a little comments. Uh, we even had one guy that said, this is really funny. He said, I was looking, he was looking for like something, you'll see it if you look in there. He was looking for some random thing, but he's like, I saw all these comments and I felt like, I didn't even listen to the podcast, but I just felt like everybody was commenting and I'm just gonna give it a five star rating like everybody <laughs> else did too. So that's, see, this is the kind of energy that yes. you guys are creating. So let's, my goal is, um, Rick has 113 comments. Are you keeping I wanna, tabs on Yes, him? I am. I wanna have 114 comments. So yeah. if you can just go make a quick comment, five star rating, we would sure and also subscribe too because yeah, we want to keep too. doing this and you know we're getting lots of great feedback and we love doing this for you guys. So, so uh, from uh, from Hotlanta, Matt, Matt, see, we don't like that. We don't like that. Just testing you. I wanted to see if you were going to go. I thought you said you didn't like it. From Atlanta, we want to say goodbye, everybody, and Bye. we'll see you next week. What's the button? Where do we hit the button? In <laughs> what? the middle. We're Bye. still here. We're still here. Okay. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Bye.